Ew. What's up, Internet? My name's Nerdy. And I'm Clarus. This is the nightly morning show for July 26th, 2021. It is almost August. Yeah, I hate that. Woof. We get nerdy nightly. And we thought we'd share it with you. That is right. Welcome back to another week of news and shenanigans here from the couch in our apartment where we do things because we can't go outside much. That's not true. That's, That's not, not true, true anymore. Because big update in the last week. Uh-huh. Gyms in Ontario are open and we've been pumping that iron. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Lifting those weights. Thank what? you for your contribution to the topic. Um, I, I, I thought I thought pumping iron was like a intake thing. I don't know why. You th- you thought it was it. I never mind. Don't. You've never wait. You've never heard the term pumping iron in relation to working out. I have, but I thought it was that like then like you have your protein shake after. I don't know. <laughs> I. I do you think that, like, protein shakes are very iron-heavy? No. <laughs> but <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Uh, anyways, how are you doing? <laughs> I don't know how I'm doing anymore. I was fine until about 30 seconds ago, and now I am baffled. I'm sorry. Um... You, okay, so you thought that pumping iron referred to what bodybuilders were eating after they worked out? Well, because, like, I, I, like, are weights made out of iron? Sometimes, yeah. I think. Okay. I don't know. I, I don't know how to talk about anything else now. I We have to do an entire podcast about this phenomenon. I thought, I don't know, I just, they were, I thought they were, like, steel or something. I don't know. I mean, they're probably made of a lot of different things, right? Or, like, that, like, like not squishy, but, like, the softer, like, rubbery material. What? <laughs> yeah, you know, the, like, colored weights. That's just that's just the wrapping that they put around the metal on the inside. You know that, right? They're, they're not, like, oh, that material all the way through. <laughs> well, I know now. I... I don't know. It's, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Anyways, how's it going? <laughs> how you doing, Clarus? I'm good. I'm really good. Thank you for asking. I appreciate that. Um... Yeah, I... Wow, I feel like I just derailed... Yep, you did. Everything. (laughs) They're typically iron because it's cheap and heavy. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, well, there you go. There you go. I... mm Mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe it was, like, popping, like, iron supplements. Like, you're, like... Are you... Do you think that bodybuilders are, like, typically anemic? I don't know. (laughs) Has anyone ever done a survey? A survey? Yeah, to find out if that's, like, a common thing. I don't know. (laughs) This is so weird. What is happening? I I really thought I was saying just, like, the most common turn of phrase, and we would just move on from it. And now I feel stuck, because I don't know how to get out of this. Well, I'm sorry. I forgot. uh, What are we doing right now? We're doing a morning show. A morning show? Are we going to pump iron later today? Nope. No, we're not. We're going to take the day off. I'm very sore. We've been working out a lot, though. The gym's opened, and uh, we went, like, five times in a week. Yeah, you went, like, five times. I went, like, three times this week. Yeah. Which was nice. And I am sore. Yep. Yeah. I I feel it. I feel it. It's amazing what not working out for a year and a half will do when you just suddenly are, like, and pedal to the metal. Yep. Yep. Your body's like, um, excuse me. I have questions. Um, but other than that, are you, uh, how you, how, I wanted to ask how you're doing because you recently uh-huh. starred in a short film that we can't see yet and we can't talk about the plot of, but I wanted to ask you about the experience of being a movie star. <laughs> wow. You make it sound a lot more glamorous. Um, it was pretty glamorous. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of fun. I'm uh, I'm really excited to be able to share it with you guys. It's uh, going to a bunch of festivals first, mm-hmm. so it probably won't be public till like probably late fall. Yeah, is my guess. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. It, I don't know. It's it's really cool. It's it was pretty much just me, 
It's, it's, I mean, it's only me throughout the whole thing, except David makes like a little small cameo thing. Yes, I'm a small cameo in it in hashtag verified short film. Um, where will it release and when? It will release, so for, for those of you who don't know, um, a lot of independent films make their names in the festival circuit. So how that works is you make a film and then you put it out to all of these festivals. And a lot of big movies do this too. Um, Dear Evan Hansen was just announced to be the opening night movie of TIFF. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Dear Evan Hansen would probably do fine without TIFF. Um, yeah. But it, it, it is a place of honor to be the opening night film of TIFF. And so Dear Evan Hansen just got that honor. Mm -hmm. But the way that it works is a lot of these festivals have rules where if you have previously released your film on a platform or if it is publicly available anywhere, it cannot be shown in the festival. There has mm -hmm. to be a degree of exclusivity mm -hmm. so that the festival can market it as the only place in town that you can watch this film is in our festival. Come to our three-day weekend. Come to our two-week, you know. It is a way of keeping the festivals vital and um, encouraging people to go to the festivals so that they can make money and continue to promote films. Yep. So we are not able to share too much about the movie until it goes through the festival circuit so that we don't ruin our chances of being shown in a festival. Yeah. Um, and that is just a process that every film that um, doesn't have a wide release kind of goes through. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's really common. This is it's actually like the most common um, path for these things. Mm -hmm. um, so as much as we would love to share it as soon as it's edited, we won't be able to do that even yeah. with our patrons, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but once it is out, it'll probably be on Vimeo. So we'll just have a link like YouTube. It might yeah. even be on YouTube. YouTube it depends or Vimeo. on where uh, the director wants to put it. Yeah. Um, so it'll be very publicly available. It'll be very easy to access. Yeah, yeah. Once it's once it's able, like mm -hmm. once it's out of the film circuit, trust me, we will share it with you guys. Yeah. Um, it just might be a couple months. I'm sorry. But it was a lot of fun. I, uh, I really enjoyed it. I'm excited to see how it turns out because there's some amazing people working on it. Mm -hmm. um, we had some real pros, uh, like, filming yeah. and and uh yeah yeah it's gonna be really cool um richardson seven a watch party on twitch we might do a we could potentially because we could literally reach out and get permission we could do that yeah we could i'm sure ali would once once it's publicly available i'm sure you know you're I the don't star think of Allie it would mind yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so we could probably actually do that we could probably do a public watch party on twitch oh, um, man, that was so weird <laughs> to watch yourself with other people yeah yeah <laughs> So yeah, um, Verified will be coming eventually, but I'm so proud of you. And I just wanted to say that publicly. I am so, so proud of you. I thought you did amazing work. Uh, you are such a little professional. <laughs> and um, sure. I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm so happy. Thank you. Um, Y'all, before we get into the news, I want to really quickly shout out Javi Coffee. Um, the morning show is brought to you by Javi because that's what I drink in the morning. Javi is a coffee concentrate that um, basically it's just a little liquid. You take two teaspoons of it. I do a tablespoon. You put that in your favorite liquid. You have the quickest cup of coffee in the world. If you want a great beverage, let me walk you through it, all right? You do about a half cup of water. You do a splash of, co or of uh, cashew milk. You do some maple syrup and a tablespoon of that Javi coffee concentrate, and you're going to be having a good time. It is iced coffee in 10 seconds or less. It's just about pouring the ingredients together. If you want to do hot drinks, you can also do that. It takes a little bit more time because you do have to boil your water. But uh, for, for an iced coffee, you will not find a better tasting or faster way to make an iced coffee than Javi coffee. And remember, kids, hashtag drink Javi. Unless you're an actual kid, then don't drink coffee or else you will end up addicted like me. <laughs> Thank you, Javi, for that. There is an affiliate link in the chat if you're watching this live. And if you're on YouTube or on the podcast feed, look in the description of the video or podcast and you can find our link to Javi there. We do get paid every time you buy things. And uh, so to the people who have been buying the Javi Coffee Tour link, thank, thank you so you. much. We really appreciate you helping us stay out of credit card debt. Yay. And now <laughs> on to the news. What kind of news do you want to start with today? Let's Should we get the big thing fun. out of the way? Do you want to start? No, let's do it. Let's sandwich it in the middle. Let's yes. do something light okay. and fun first. You all know that there is a big negative thing that we have to talk about, but I got <clears throat> we're going to start with uh, some fun news. What do you want to do for fun news? I don't know. What's fun? We have a Batgirl, Leslie Grace, the actress who was recently starring in the In the Heights movie. Uh -huh. um, so she has a little bit of musical ability. Uh, she is going to be our Batgirl in the upcoming HBO Max 
movie, Batgirl, which is only a disappointment to me because, like, just put it on the big screen. Yeah. Put it on the big screen, you cowards. I'm, wow. I'm saying it. I'm saying it. Batgirl deserves... Batgirl is such a monumentally huge character. She deserves her big screen moment. I, I don't want to watch Batgirl at home. I want to see it in IMAX. Yeah. Give Leslie Grace the big screen IMAX treatment that she deserves. Because honestly, I haven't seen In the Heights yet, but no. she's great in all the clips. Mm -hmm. Every trailer, this girl is is stunning. She's talented. She seems so fun. I think that she's going to bring like a little bit of grit, but also a little bit of bubble to Batgirl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not just dark and <clears throat> moody all Because that's time. not who Babs is, right? right? Babs has always been a little bit of a breath of fresh air that brings some softness out of Bruce. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I like that dynamic in their characters. Um, put it on the big screen, you cowards. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know why. I don't know. Yeah. I don't really get it. I, I mean, I do get it. It's because HBO Max is the one putting up the money for it. And it's sure. also to promote HBO Max. I understand. And like yeah. at the end of the day, I know. I just like, it is the first Batgirl movie the yeah. only other Batgirl we've had on the big screen is Alicia Silverstone in Batman and Robin, which is which is what it is. And I love that movie for all of its campy trashiness. But, like, this is the first Batgirl movie. Just... Yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess they gotta do something to push HBO Max. And I, I, I guess this is it. But, uh... Mm -hmm. uh yeah, yeah, it kind of sucks. It kind of sucks. I, you know, the... <laughs> There's a lot of uh, DC movies that um, not good, and so you know, at least when they're not good, a lot of the time you can be like, well, at least it was nice, and I saw it in the theater, and they made it look good. And, and there were fun like big moments. Like I remember, <laughs> I I don't love Batman v Superman, right? Like I think that my feelings about that movie are pretty clear. Um, there are many videos where we talk about it, and I but I will say like I'm glad I saw that movie in theaters the first time. Right. Because. Even, even though it doesn't really hold together all the way through for me, the big moments are so big that seeing it on that giant IMAX on 68th Street in New York sure. was a pleasure. Zack Snyder creates visual delicacies with his movies. Like, truly. No, 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 yeah, but it's yeah. truly. Like, the, he paints pictures that are just stunning. Mm -hmm. And so, I, I don't know. I, I think... Um, I, 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 I kind of am joking. I, I totally understand why this is going to HBO Max. I get it. If it was the, if it was a choice between either it's on HBO Max or it doesn't get made, mm -hmm. I'm so glad that it's getting made. Mm -hmm. I want a Batgirl movie. I love Babs. Um, yeah. I have no problem with Babs not being white, and if you do, get out. We probably just don't. We probably won't agree on very much, but um, yeah. I, I think Leslie Grace is going to be fantastic. I, I think mm -hmm. that this is going to be very fun. Um, I, I don't know. I, I just wish I would get to see it in theaters. And maybe they will do a limited theater release and I'll still get to see it in theaters. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'll be like two weeks in theaters only and they'll make a crap ton of money because nerds like me will be like, yes, give it to me. <laughs> I'll go seven times. <laughs> um, I also think that this, I, I might be wrong, but I think that this might be the first um, superhero movie with a Latina woman in the lead role. Movie? I think. I can't think of another one. Um, so I kind of would have liked if that could have been in theaters just for that m sake. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I think that there's um, there's a lot that can be done for um, representing Latinx people in yeah, the cinema. Yeah. And I yeah. think that it would have been cool to see this in theaters. But I also totally understand. I get it. I get why it's on HBO Max. Yeah, it's fine. I mm -hmm. like, yeah, I understand. But it would have been, it would have been great, I think, to see on the big screen. Even when, like, even when movies are bad, like, you know... Fast 9 was bad, but mm -hmm. at least saw it in theaters, and so all the stuff looked cool. The same cannot be said for Snake Eyes. That movie was just bad, and it also didn't Oof, look yeah. great. Um, Our full review is available on YouTube. But, yeah, um, <laughs> but like DC, t generally for their movies, tends to make good-looking movies. I don't know, if, like... I in, would agree with that. Yeah, in yeah. the most recent years, I don't know if there has been a DC movie where I'm like, no, it didn't look good. I, the only one I would say is Wonder Woman 1984 had some bad CGI in it. Yes. There were yes. and there were beautiful moments in Wonder Woman 1984 as well. Yeah, they kind of like It was a hit and miss visual. Yeah, exactly. Some of the times when Wonder Woman's running in that movie, just it that you can just is. tell she's on a treadmill. It's like it's it's weird. Yeah, it is super weird. Um <laughs> but uh you know what? <laughs> Richard Sim7 in the chat says Gal Gadot is mistaken for Latino a lot. Does that count? No. Does no, it does count. not. Nope. 
<laughs> also, I don't know how you look at her and think that she's Latino. Uh, I, well, it's but, just people that are like, well, she's got dark hair and a bit of a tan. All like, olive-skinned people speak Spanish, and you're like, that's not nope, how the world works, that's not, person. You're incorrect. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Jesus. I forgot uh, about that, but yeah, there were a lot of... There, that is a thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people think that. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> but since we're on the subject of HBO Max, that is slightly exciting HBO Max news. And if I'm saying that is slightly exciting, you have to we imagine have, this is huge. We have more? HBO Max news, yeah. We are getting... Michael B. Jordan, truly one of the most fantastic actors of the last decade, in my opinion, from um, Fruitvale Station through Black Panther, mm -hmm. through Creed, through everything else that he's done. I literally just mentioned the movies he's done with Ryan Coogler. He has done other things. But um, Michael B. Jordan is a fantastic <laughs> genre or a, a generation defining actor, in my mm -hmm. opinion. And he is teaming up with HBO Max to bring us Val Zod, the second Superman, the Superman of Earth 2, to a series on HBO Max. And when I tell you this is what I want more than anything, <laughs> this is what I want more than anything. Yep. Yeah. 100%. I thought, I thought, like, when I first saw it on, like, Twitter or whatever, I, like, was like, is that, is this legit? Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. It's like... Wait a second, this seems too good to be true. <laughs> truly, truly. <laughs> um, yeah, he's he's incredible. And I mm -hmm. think that... Um, I think that um, him being at the helm of this is going to just really give it a, a, a unique perspective. You know, instead of a bunch of, like, white people putting together a black Superman, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, his influence in this is going to, I think, just hit home. You know. Well, and it's interesting, right? Because we this is kind of side by side with the J.J. Abrams Superman movie mm -hmm. that is going to feature a black Superman as well. Yeah. And I wonder if this is the same project. Um, I wonder if they're both going to happen. It seems... A, I'm going to be really honest. It seems a little bit odd to me that they would do an HBO Max black Superman show mm -hmm. and a, a big screen DCEU black Superman movie and have Clark Kent in Superman and Lois. Yeah. So I... I it's just, it's a lot of Superman, uh -huh. and I'm down for a lot of Superman. I just hope that these projects manage to be different enough from one another yeah. that it justifies having all three at the same time. Mm -hmm. I also hope this doesn't mean that Superman and Lois gets kiboshed in favor of these projects, because I'm quite liking Superman and Lois so far. I mean, we kind of stopped watching it. Yeah, but I, I everything I've seen so far I liked. I just haven't had time to keep up that with it. That is not true. Most of it. There's a couple of things. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I just like... Okay. You're very nice. I like Tyler Hecklin as Clark Kent so yes. much. Yeah, absolutely. Is, is what I think I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. I really, really love Tyler Hecklin's Clark Kent. I think that he is a perfect Superman for the Clark Kent Superman. And so I, I would like to live in a world where he stays as Clark Kent mm -hmm. and we have Michael B. Jordan as Val Zod and J.J. Abrams' Black Superman movie isn't another Clark Kent, but instead that's Calvin Ellis. So we... I want to live in a world where I get all three of the Superman that I grew up reading. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want all three of them. I don't necessarily need two Clark Kents. I also don't yeah. need another Clark Kent movie right now. Yeah, I've seen that origin lot. story. Yeah, exactly. I think Calvin Ellis for the movie would be really interesting. And then have Val Zod in the TV show, explore mm -hmm. Earth 2 on HBO Max, get some Green Lanterns in there, get some, get Robot Lois in there, like get weird and Earth 2-y and get all of that goodness in there. Bring Tyler Hecklin from Superman and Lois to be Bizarro, the weird chipped away Kal El from the Earth Two comics in um, the Valzod show. Have Tyler Hecklin be the villain as a brainwashed like Bizarro Superman. If uh, get, like, can you imagine Tyler Hecklin as Kal El fighting like all that Michael crossover. B. Jordan as Valzod? It would be it would just be so good. Yeah, and like. This Give me be... Calvin Ellis on the big screen. Give me yeah. President Superman. Do the whole thing. Give me all three. Yeah. And, like, this could be ugh, really clever it. if they do it right. Because otherwise it does seem like a lot. But I think I think if they're smart about this, you know, we could get some really amazing DC um, Superman content. So I've got my fingers crossed, you know. Yeah. And I trust Michael B. Jordan. I know at least that's going to be... That, I, oh I, that's God. gonna be good it's gonna be great when he when we get that first i we don't know if michael b jordan is going to suit up as superman yet mm -hmm. we just know that he's producing it i genuinely genuinely want him to play that role so bad i would love for him to play that role but also hear me out i would love for michael b jordan 
to find a smaller, like, not known at all, like, brand new person of color. Mm -hmm. And, like... And elevate their career. Give them the yeah. role of a lifetime. And, like, work under, like, his guidance because he, he knows what's up, right? Like... That's a good point. I, I, I would be so down for either one that I don't know which one I would like more. Because Michael B. Jordan is incredible. Um, the, the other side of that, but, though, is if they were to find, if, if Michael B. Jordan were to be mentoring an up-and-coming actor who's mm -hmm. really great for the role, yeah. I think that it would also be kind of nice because Michael B. Jordan's very busy. Yeah. Uh, Michael B. Jordan is directing Creed 3. He's going to star in Creed 3. Yeah. Michael B. Jordan might not be down to play Val Zod for years. Yeah. This, this, if, this if he does it, this might be a one-off. Whereas if we found someone a little bit up and coming who wants to like make their name on this Superman role, I think that there could be a lot of potential in having Val Zod be the Superman of the, you know, the HBO Max universe they're building with Green Lantern and yeah. this Batgirl show. Have these, have this HBO Max universe be its own thing mm -hmm. and find that, you know, find that actor who wants to be the Superman of that universe for the next five, six seasons. Yeah. And you could build a really cool Justice League HBO Max universe that would in my opinion, make HBO Max a must-subscribe service. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Cause right so now, that's like, a good point. Yeah, right now, it's like, we don't have HBO Max, but I'm kind of like, well... We, well, fine. we can't. We're in Canada. I know, but we, it doesn't we, but bother we, we me. Would. We would have HBO Max. But I'm, what I mean is it doesn't bother me too much. Like, I'm not like, gosh darn, I wish I really had it right now. But for something Fair. like that, if there was a thing, I'd be like, I gotta. You know, I, I gotta, I gotta, I need it. Needless to say, we've had some really good news out of HBO Max. Yeah. I want that Batgirl movie on screens, but um, on bigger screens. It's going we to be on We just need a bigger but... TV. Yeah. We need to live in a big house with a media room. Yeah. We need to get good, kids. Yeah. And get rich. Start playing those scratch cards. Start playing those scratch cards. All right. Well, um, that was our HBO Max news. Where, where do you want to go next? Should we tackle the big... Should we tackle yep. the... Yeah. <clears throat> Everybody's waiting for it, I think. All right. This is obviously the conversation of the week. Mm -hmm. This is the conversation that will be an ongoing conversation for a while to come. Mm -hmm. um, but the state of California is suing Activision Blizzard, the company behind many of my favorite games, unfortunately, because of an investigation, a two-year investigation that they did into sexual harassment complaints and um, policies and... Um, um, uh, pay inequities mm -hmm. within the company. Uh, this is a really difficult uh, situation. It's a difficult time. Mm -hmm. um, and it has spurred a outpouring of stories from women who have worked in the gaming industry uh, who are pointing out that this is not a Blizzard and Activision issue. This is a um, just industry-wide problem yeah. that they are dealing with. Yeah, which is honestly uh a tragedy mm -hmm. um and we like we have said uh we're not going to go into any details of the lawsuit as to what exactly happened and per personal accounts you can find that all online it is readily available mm -hmm. and i do encourage everybody to take a look at it and um and know what's going on you know mm -hmm. like it sure ignorance is bliss sometimes but ignorance is how we get ourselves in these prolonged situations where people turn a blind eye and pretend that it doesn't exist. Um, we, we also just think that um, yeah, this should be something that you should approach in your own way. Yep. Um, and when you're in the right headspace, we don't want to just force the details upon you. It is uh, pretty dark and grim. It's it's awful. Yeah. It is... Uh, yeah, it's really horrible. And... Uh, I, I, yeah. I wish I could say I was surprised. Um, yeah. But I've been to Comic-Con my whole life. And so there are elements of geek culture and nerd the nerddom as i like to call it mm -hmm. that have always had this undercurrent of mm -hmm. sexism and 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 um i mean for god's sake we had to have cosplay is not consent as a slogan of an entire comic-con to make a point about how we should treat cosplayers like yeah. it's not like anyone should be surprised by this um it is just it's so sad to see it at such a grand scale at such a large company um, that is responsible for so many people's uh, free time and, and, and what we do with our free time. And yeah. My childhood, I, my, you know, my, my sibling in the chat and I, you know, knows, we, I spent so much of my life playing StarCraft. Yeah. That was, that was a huge, huge, huge portion of my childhood. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it's so tough to know that that 
financial support that I gave that company was used as leverage to mistreat women. Yeah. 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 It's, um, I think that, um, I think that if we can take away anything from this to try and, uh, move forward and do better, Mm -hmm. um, a lot of, uh, people have come out saying that, um, the best thing that you can do is have the awareness and say something if you notice um, someone being mistreated mm-hmm. um, in, in any way uh, because sometimes that person will not be in a position in that moment to say something for themselves. Mm-hmm. They'll either be too scared or they'll be too shocked or, you know, or it, 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 or then they'll go home and think about it later and be like, wait, that's not okay. Um, so I think that that's like the most important thing that we mm-hmm. can say right now is if, if you see anything in any space on Twitch or online with your friends, or even in your workspace, even if you don't work in gaming, unfortunately this is like yeah. a thing that kind of happens everywhere, uh, but you know, the, the gaming industry is um, particularly bad for it apparently. Um, just say something, just um, stand up for the people that you work with and that um, and that you care about, and that's going to be the best way to uh, to advocate for change and make a difference in this, mm-hmm. um, in any way moving forward, uh, it's those little things. It's those small moments. They mean a lot more than you might think. Um, so, yeah, just please, please stand up for your friends. Yeah, I also want to point out um, the uh, there is there's a lot of anger. There's a lot of um, upset from the employees of the company right now. Yeah. Um, over how the company has responded to these claims and to this lawsuit, mm-hmm. uh, there are a number of current department heads and and people who work for Activision Blizzard who have come out against the company's initial response to this. Uh, the company did come out at first and say that uh, these accusations were falsehoods or that they were misrepresenting the truth mm-hmm. or that they were taken out of context. Yeah. And obviously the company has since walked things back. The former head of Blizzard um, has come out and apologized, uh, has acknowledged that uh, that he failed the women of the company. Mm-hmm. Um, and while he's no longer at the company anymore, um, you know, I, I understand that he understands, I think, that his actions helped create a culture there. Yep. Um, or, or at least his actions did not stop a culture there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the people of this company, the current people who are behind this company, are upset with the company even still over how they're responding to this. Mm-hmm. Um, and Activision Blizzard, for the most part, has remained pretty quiet since. Their social medias have gone pretty dark. Uh, I think that they're in a position that they do not know how to get out of. I don't know that there is a clean way to get out of this. No. I think that this is going to be a rather defining moment for the company for many years to come. Mm-hmm. And... It is really going to be interesting to see how they handle this because I think this is not going to be the first of these gaming companies that is going to face a situation like this. Yeah. There have been rumblings under the surface about other companies for a while now. Yep. And I think that this is going to just be kind of the first of many. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be interesting to watch it as it moves forward. Yep. Um, because... You know, how is Call of Duty going to sell? They're going to put it out. Is BlizzCon going to happen? What do you even do? Yeah, right? how do you make BlizzCon a thing? Because the type of people who are going to show up to it are probably not the kind of people that you want there and want the face of your, like, image yeah. to be at the moment. And it's unfortunate, you know, because there are um, incredible creators and stuff who have made their lives around certain Blizzard or Activision games, you know? like. Yeah. I'm a StarCraft streamer, or, yeah. you know, I do this, and, like, what are you supposed to do now? Because you can't support that company, but you also have to make a living, and it's like, you know, people are being put in horrible situations, yeah. and I think for the next couple of years, things are going to get rocky, things are going to get dicey, things are going to suck, mm-hmm. and I just really hope that we come out better for it on the other side. Yeah, I, 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 I truly, my heart truly goes out to all of the women who first work for Blizzard, obviously, um, and also and also the women who work in the peripheral space around Blizzard. Um, I think that this has been uh, a really upsetting time for uh, female streamers of um, WoW and of uh, Overwatch yeah. and pe- people who have made their names promoting that company. Yeah. I think that this can be a uh, this. I I don't want to put words in their mouth or feelings in their brains, but um, I can imagine the 
whiplash of uh, this discovery, and, and yeah. I, I just, I, my heart truly goes out to you mm-hmm. if you're in that position, and um, this has just been very difficult for the industry, and I think difficult for all of us, right? Yeah. But it's important to talk about. I, I, you know, this is the morning show. We have fun. This is supposed to be like nerd news and shenanigans. It's a good time. Clarks makes up the news, all that stuff, but the, we can't ignore stuff like this. It ha- no. We have to talk about it. We have to drag it into the light, because... The, the Me Too era that people talk about as this, like, thing of the past is not a thing of the past. No, it's It not. is a march forward to progress us towards a society where all people can walk into their place of work and feel comfortable yeah. working. Yeah. And it's insane that we're having to have this conversation, but it's expected, unfortunately, and we just have to keep having the conversation so that we can stamp this out because yeah. it's important to stamp it out. Yeah. Not talking about it only helps the perpetrators. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, we're not about that. And, um, yeah, so this, this, we, we, I mean, this has been out for the majority of the week. We all knew this was coming, yeah. but, um, I thank you for, for, for being here and, um, you know, helping us make a difference in the smallest way that we possibly can and know how to, and just to talk about these things and bring light to them. Yeah. It, it's also going to be interesting to see what the, uh, the, we, we've talked a lot about the accusations and, and, and the, I, you know, the, the culture. But uh, the lawsuit itself, I mean, the state is suing them. It'll be interesting to see what the consequences of that are. Yep. Um, and uh, what the financial cost of this might end up being. Like, this could be a pretty devastating blow. Sorry. <clears throat> this could end up being a very devastating blow for the company. And yeah. pro- probably should be. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh... Yeah. Um, we'll have to see um, where this ends up leading to. It's also kind of weird because... Um, Taters are bringing this up. Um, Activision Blizzard is isn't just like one company; it's right. a lot of companies. And so, I, I also I, I really want to um, just also say that my heart goes out to the to the companies within this company that don't have this problem, right? Yeah. Like there, because I, I imagine, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the entire thing is bad. But you know, there are smaller studios that are part of this. And if if you are in one of those smaller studios and you guys have a great work culture. And y'all get along, and no one feels mistreated, and you're just caught up in this. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Like you don't deserve this. And this is the thing that sucks so much about being a shitty person is it bleeds out into everyone around you. Yeah. Like, even if you were not a part of this at all, even if you were the best person working at this company, you're still a part of this scandal now, mm-hmm. and that sucks. It you drag when you suck. You suck the life out of everyone around you. Yeah. And it's so unfair. And I just... So I, don't suck. Yeah. So don't suck. Do better. Could y'all just not suck? Men. Dear men. My fellow men. Could you not suck so much? Thanks. That'd be great. <laughs> I mean, look. look oh, God. Th- there are some upsides for me, right? Like... Men have lowered the bar so far that a guy like me was able to nab a beautiful, perfect woman like this just because, like, her expectations were so low. Like, I shower and brush my teeth every day, and that was basically enough, y'all. Like, so in that way, thank you for literally putting the bar on the ground so all I had to do was, like, walk over it. But um, other than that, men, if you could just, like, hold yourselves to a higher standard, please, for the love of God. Yeah. That would be really cool. Oh, man. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to make this entertaining and not just depressing, no, but I'm sad. No, I know. It is It is sad, but I think that we've I think we've said what we can say. I know, but I'm still sad. I've said what I can say, but I'm, I like I love Blizzard games. I know. I know. Um, I do. Okay. I love StarCraft. It was... The, the number of nights where I would wait until my parents went to sleep so that I could sneak up to the main floor of our house and I could play starcraft literally all night while the rest of my family slept was three nights a week in my childhood back when i could do that without feeling like an old man um and i oh, you God. know i just we did that all the time and like honestly it was a race of me and my bro- me and my siblings would race to see who could get to that computer first as soon as we thought mom was asleep you know what i mean and so it's just tough like i starcraft was, <laughs> starcraft meant something to us and yeah. I just, I, I just, it feels gross right now. And now the, like, character designs of Blizzard characters feel so much more gross. It already did, but, like, now it's like, oh, uh, Yeah. Uh, uh. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, but, uh, let's move on. 
Yeah. Let's move on. There's more show. other news. Before we move on to the next story, Slytherin Kid wants to know what's the context of my shirt. So, um, Jeffers played, our, our good friend Just Jeffers Games played, um, uh, Hades Blindfolded. And so I made several jokes about beating the, um, Lerny, the Bone Hydra. Uh, I said that if you beat him, you'll be the Boner Champ. And he was like, well, if you help me beat him, then we, we'll be the Boner Champ. And I was like, I'm making Boner Champ into a shirt. And so yeah. you can buy this shirt at redbubble.com slash nerdy nightly. That is a plug. I love a plug. But let's move on. You too can be a Boner Champ. You too can be a Boner Champ. Let's move on to the weekend box office. How about that? Yeah. How some about box that? News. Um, y'all, I need to pull this up because I want to get these numbers right. But uh, this was a weekend at the box office. It was a weekend. It was not a good weekend at the box office. In mm. fact, uh, some might say it was uh, a pretty bad weekend at the box office. Um, it's fine. Next weekend will be great. Really? Suicide Squad. That's two weekends from now. Next weekend is Jungle Cruise. I'm not oh, sure. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I don't know how Jungle Cruise is gonna do. Is anyone gonna go see it? I would actually love to know if anyone in chat is like interested in seeing Jungle Cruise. I'm... I do want to see Green Knight, but we can't see that because we're seeing it with Fenton Mello when we get back. Yeah, we also don't need to really, like... I don't think that we're going to make a video on that one. No, probably not. It'll just be fun. Yeah. Um. All right, let me just pull this up. All right, y'all. So, uh, the expe- I-, I think most people went into this weekend thinking uh, that Snake Eyes would probably win the weekend. I think that was the expectation. Um, Maybe if it had been good. Yeah, but I think bad reviews with uh, some other issues pushed it to number two. That is right. Uh, as you can tell, uh, the top number there is this weekend. Uh, the bottom number is the amount that the movie has made so far internationally. Both of those things are in millions. Um, so let's get into it. Old wins the weekend with 16.5 million. Uh, surprising Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes coming in uh, just over $3 million less. Uh, however, last weekend, the number one movie, Space Jam, was over $31 million. So this is definitely a lighter weekend at the box office. Black Widow is sitting at number two. Uh, in its third weekend of release, it had a 55... Number sorry, number three, thank you. Uh, it had a 55% drop. Um, Space Jam dropped from number one to number four. Uh, that had a 69% drop to 9.5 million. Nice. And, yeah, that's 69% drop. Uh, and then F9 The Fast Saga is in number five with 4.7 million. Uh, it should be noted that Black Widow has crossed 300 million internationally, and Fast 9 has crossed 600 million internationally. We're all very happy to see those big numbers. It means good things for theater owners. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk about the rest of the top 10 really quick, because Escape Room Tournament of Champions dropped over 60% to number 6 out of 3rd place. Boss Baby crossed 50 million domestic this weekend, which is very exciting. Uh, that is uh, That pulled in 2.7 million. The Forever Purge crossed 40 million, sitting at uh, 2.3 million this weekend. And The Quiet Place Part 2, still going, is uh, just pulled in another 1.2 million. And Roadrunner, the Anthony Bourdain film, pulled in another $830,000. That is a documentary with $3.7 million in the bank, which is not too shabby. Um, and uh, that's that's it for the top 10. It's exciting to see a documentary in the top 10. Yeah. Um, um, how many weeks is Quiet Place? Quiet Place um, Part 2 is nine weeks in release. Wow, and interestingly, okay. it's in the top 10, but Quiet Place Part 2 is available for free on Paramount Plus right now. So, oh, wow, um, and they're still making money. Yeah, despite having opened in a, a, a streaming service last weekend, uh, there's still a little bit of money for The Quiet Place Part 2. People are really hot on that movie. Good. Uh, excellent reviews will do that. Um, and also just the hype coming off of the first one. The first Quiet Place movie is mm-hmm. superb. Yeah. Uh, I have yet to see the second one, but I'm, I'm really excited for it. I'm a big, big, big John Krasinski fan um, for so many reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, old. Despite not great reviews, um, it is... It is both old and Snake Eyes are considered uh, rotten on the tomato meter. Um, old is in the fifties. Snake Eyes is in the low forties. Um, I mean, yeah, it's bad. <laughs> yeah, it's a bad movie. Uh, unfortunately, the, the action is just so poorly shot. Um, yeah. And when you're an action movie, it's like mm-hmm. the one thing you have to do is get that right. But you should go see The Quiet Place Part Two. I think I'll watch it at home. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's one. I, I'm not dying to see it in theaters. Okay. Um, I, I kind of am. I could do that tonight while you're streaming. It's just, I just was like, oh, I could wow. run to the movies. Um, that would be fun. Have a little solo movie date. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Do ooh. it. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> there's a lot of movies I want to see, though. Like, I haven't seen Escape Room 2 yet. I've, to- I've been told it's not good. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen Space Jam yet, although I'm also probably going to wait. Great. I really want to see Old, because... Um, but the reviews have been, like, meh. The reviews have been a little bit all over the place. Hmm. Um, people kind of either... It's kind of like... It's an M. Night Shyamalan movie. You know what I mean? Like, it's like people love it. People hate it. People are indifferent to it. it he is a very... He's a controversial filmmaker. Yeah. There's an element of that movie that I think I'm not going to like, so I don't know that I would like it, but there is a whole storyline. This is slight spoilers for old, but there is a storyline where, um, th- that involves like sort of children getting pregnant. Yeah. In a weird way. It's, uh, yeah. and I don't know that I want to watch that. Yeah. I, that's why I'm kind of like, ah, I'm good. I'm I've good. also been told it's not necessarily all that relevant to the plot of the movie, which makes me feel really like, why? Yeah, like what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, this was a this was a slower weekend at the box office. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, the real question I think coming out of this, I think the obvious question coming out of this is, um, does Snake Eyes coming in second ruin uh, the chances for a new GI Joe universe? Oh God! If it was me, I would be like, yeah, don't make any of that crap again. See, I, here's the thing. I think that the cast is worth bringing back for another movie. For a G.I. Sure. Joe movie. Sure. I think Henry Golding's a great Snake Eyes. I think the problem with Henry Golding as Snake Eyes is that you don't bring Henry Golding in to not speak. Um, and well, it, moving forward, Snake Eyes at some point needs to stop talking if he's going to actually be Snake Eyes. Yeah, look. <clears throat> but, um, I don't know. I honestly think that they kind of screwed up. Because, like, the plot of the story... Like, the, the plot was crap and the main character is a crappy person and i just i'm like i don't want to see more of that yeah i just think that if you're gonna make more gi joe stuff andrew koji is a perfect storm shadow sure i really like ursula corbero as baroness um i think that um samara weaving as scarlet is good casting i think that you have like i think that the cast that you have is great for the movies you want to make yeah but that you have to now work on the pile of shit that you have already laid out for yourself i don't really think you do i think you can just ignore this movie I think, honestly, you, you take the Cobra stuff that you set up, you take the design elements that you set up in this movie, because the design, the, the, the actual, like, design of stuff was great. The costume design was really solid. Yeah. That Snake Eyes suit looks great. The um, Storm Shadow um, robes look fantastic. Yeah. I think Scarlet's combat gear looks great. Baroness looked great. Like, I think that you t- keep those, and you just ignore the Sunstone and all the other stuff, and you just... Yeah. make a G.I. Joe movie and you just bring these in as members of the cast. Yeah, I could see it. I Andrew see Koji it. as Storm Shadow is so... Like, if you, you could replace... Well, I don't know. The, Baroness and Scarlet are great. I, I think that you would have to replace Henry Golding because I don't think Henry Golding is going to show up to a movie he's not speaking in. Yeah. And I don't know why he would. Like, you need a... You just get a really talented stunt black belt martial artist. Yeah. Go to the Olympics, get whoever just won gold in the judo competition... <laughs> And let them be snake eyes in the suit because they don't have to talk. Mm-hmm. And and keep this cast. I think, you know, like, I want to see Andrew Koji back. I want to see... I'm, I, I'm going to watch Warrior now, that show he's on. Because yeah. he's so good in this movie. Truly so good in this movie that, like, I, I want to see more of him now. Because yeah. this was my first introduction to him. And I was... I'm, I'm kind of in love. I think he's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. If you want to... If you want to see... We did a Should You Watch and then a spoiler chat. So, if you... Miller's saying, congrats on the gold medal. You are Snake Eyes now. You are not allowed to talk. <laughs> that would That's be it. so funny. If they just went That's to the it. Olympics and started handing out roles. Oh, oh I'm sorry. God. Did you win the swimming competition? You are Namor the Submariner. <laughs> Welcome to Black Panther 2, Michael Phelps. Oh, my God. Here's your contract. <laughs> like. <laughs> that would be so funny. <laughs> Uh, hey, that, I mean, they kind of do that, though, right? Like, um, yeah. they they pulled in weightlifters for movie roles before. Look at, like, the mountain in Game of Thrones. Um, he didn't go to the Olympics, though, did he? I don't know if he went to the Olympics, but they, he's, like, uh, you know, the world's strongest man or whatever. Yeah, yeah. He lifted a really big tree or something. I watched a video of it. It was insane. Oh, yeah, I've watched him, like, do the, like, lifty things, and wow. Mm-hmm. It's, the lifty uh, things. It's, it's something... <laughs> Great job in the archery competition. You are now a guy. <laughs> Yay! Well done. Um, uh, speaking of the Olympics, I, I know we're still talking about the box office. Uh, maybe we're done with that. But um, the uh, the the Russian um woman who won the like gun shooting competition. The gun shooting. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the, her what her sport is called. Um, is there one that's just shooting <clears throat> like handguns? Yeah, I think it's like aim. It's like um, distance shooting or something. 
It's um, probably called like Range or something. I don't know. She she made news on nerd websites because she is a giant fan of The Witcher. Um, and ah. in this Olympics and the last Olympics, goes into competition wearing the wolf medal Jeez. that Geralt wears around his neck. Nice. And so she's such a big fan of The Witcher that she literally wears Geralt's medal as her, like, token of luck. I approve. Uh, and I saw some photos, and it looked really cool for her to be, like, yeah. just wolf out and just, like, pew, 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 I love pew, pew, pew. it. I love that. Yeah. I need, I need more of that in my life, please, and thank you. Um, and so, uh, to that Russian lady, you're, you're awesome. Yeah. We stand you here at yeah. the Nerdy Nightly. Well done. Um, wear your nerddom with pride, kids, <laughs> by going to redbubble.com slash nerdy nightly. <laughs> wow. All right. That's enough plugs for today. You just really like your shirt, don't you? I do. I'm the boner champ. Um, all right. Uh, what else do we have to talk about today? Um, all right. Let's get into some more news. This time, the made-up variety, Clarus, makes up the news. Gosh darn it. Gosh darn it. <laughs> ah. Now would you like a wife? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, uh, Goblin, I will try and put you in contact with her. We'll get Except you I touch. don't have her contact info. Yeah, I don't know. She's also in Russia, so like, you'd have to move to Russia. Don't know. That's complicated. Or you it could is. get married and then get, get her over, get her green card. Get her to the ATL. <laughs> Sounds great. All right, so Clarus makes up the news. Let's go. Um, <laughs> I waited till later in the show so you had more things to. Draw I know, inspiration but from. things got really intense, and I forgot to come up with something. You, you've never once remembered to come up with something. That's not technically true, but I just say generally scrap the ideas. Okay, mm, so uh, so so you do so you take the time to come up with something, and then instead sit here for two minutes. Going, well, yeah, because I'm like, no, it's not good. <laughs> That's not exactly. Y'all, y'all don't know how often I hear this noise in my marriage. <laughs> what? You go <laughs> a lot when you think. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. I'm not. I'm not making that up. No, I don't. Oh no, I. You do. You do it on stream all the time. I do not. Yeah, you do. You go. <laughs> Yeah, it's your like thinking phase. It's like you're. It's like you're. It's when, when you're like stressed about something, and you're like, or when you're playing a game and you're stressed about something, you go. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I've done that when I'm like scared, so I don't like. Oh no, no no! It's when you're like uh, when you're frustrated with a game. When you were playing Mass Effect, when you were in that one part that you didn't like, you were literally doing the. <laughs> okay, that's because I was trying not to cry. Oh, All maybe right? that's it. Maybe you're trying not to cry noise, but you do it a lot. <laughs> You do it when you're photo editing. When I'm, like, lying in bed and you're at the computer photo editing and there's something happening that you don't like, you go... <laughs> you just... You do. Wow, I'm never going to do that ever again. I hate it. I don't think you think about it when you do it. I think it's, like... I don't think it's, like, an active thing. I hate that so I think it's much. just, like, a tick that you do. Oh Sorry to point God. it out. That's so mean of me. Oh, no. I just thought you knew. You do it so often that I just assumed that you knew that you were... I hate it. It sounds horrible. It's cuter when you do it. It is much less cute when I do it. <laughs> Admittedly. It is a very cute noise coming out of you, and it's kind of a disgusting, like, burn it with fire noise when it comes out of me. I was like, I sound like a moose. No, 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 no. I sound like a moose. You look like a moose. There's a difference. That's fair. I'll take it. Moose are badass. They're strong. It's higher pitch when you do it, so it's cute. It's like... <laughs> I don't know. Oh my god. Make up the news so I stop doing this. I'll stop teasing you when you make yeah, up the news. Yeah, please stop. Please stop. Oh my god. No, G Goblin, I'm referencing a TikTok. It's a... I, I was making a, a joke a about a TikTok. A very cute moose. A very cute moose. That's a... Uh, make all the boy moose go. Princess Diaries. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Wah. Wah. <laughs> Anyways. Wah. I love speaking in TikTok memes. Um, Especially when people don't know that we talk in TikTok memes so much around the house that we don't know that they don't have the context. Yep. It's great comedy. It's great. Make up the news. Um, um, there's a new Olympic sport. What? Yeah. Skateboarding? No. Oh, okay. No, it's not skateboarding. It's, um, the new Olympic sport. Okay. This just in. Uh, wow. Is, uh, is really, really, uh, interesting. It's a, it's a strong choice. Um. <clears throat> Your Instagram feed is wild. I'm sorry. Uh. <laughs> 
It's uh, so the the newest newest sport mm-hmm. is actually um a little more laid back. Oh, little, okay. A little more laid back, actually. It's um, uh, it's bird watching, uh, with the added element of um um uh, vocal gymnastics. Um, the potential bird watchers must also imitate bird cries while watching the birds. And uh, you are scored on uh, difficulty and accuracy and, mm-hmm. um, and inhumanness is the third category. Um, so if you, the less you sound like a human being, the, the better that you do. Wonderful. Um, so I, I'm so glad that you're bringing this news to us. Yeah. You've welcome. done some research into this, obviously. Absolutely. So uh, could you imitate some of these sounds that one might make at these Olympics? In, so that we can get an idea of what it is that this uh, this sport is. <laughs> Absolutely not. Well, I think I think that you brought this up, and I think that you should um, you should give us I'm an not, idea of what this sport is. I'm not going to compete in it. No, no, I know, I know. Just just some uh, just some just just give us some like um, vocal gymnastics so that we can understand. Uh, you know that uh, me and chat we don't know what you're talking about, so I need you to kind of imitate what this might sound like. <laughs> Uh, but I don't wanna. I, I know, but you're the one who brought it up, and I get to ask follow-up questions. That's how this segment works. So, Clarus, um, um, you've made up the news. Now, uh, make up some vocal gymnastics. Um, um, well, well, uh, uh, I don't know any birds. <laughs> I've forgotten every bird. All right, all right. Um... <laughs> I'm a woodpecker. There you go. <laughs> Not one part of that was a vocal gymnastic. Not a single part of that was a vocal gymnastic. You just hit your phone, which doesn't have a case on it. We have to return that at some point. It's fine, and my nails are very soft. Oh my god. No, I'm, I demand vocal gymnastics. You can't get away, you can't um, get away with some shit like that. Um, Absolutely not. Okay. I'm a... I don't know any birds. Uh... I'm a crow. (laughs) (laughs) That was... I would have scored very low on the human aspect. Because that definitely (laughs) sounded like a person yelling. (laughs) Can you give me, um... Can you give me, like, the difference between, like, a crow? We've heard a crow now. Can you give us, like, an eagle so we can understand the difference? No, eagles are so high-pitched. They're like... <laughs> and then... They, <laughs> that's, that, I don't know. That was, that was a pretty good interpretation of an eagle. I, I love that my arms! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I love that the it arms get that. higher when the pits get higher. <laughs> It helps me get into character. Obviously, I'm not a professional. I don't plan on competing. Um. Okay. So those are those are two um, um those are two birds of prey, right? <laughs> Could you give us like a warbler, like something a, a, a softer bird, something with a bit more of a song to it? Um. 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 God, this would be so much easier if I could whistle. <laughs> <laughs> That's about as good as my whistling gets. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't even. I can't even imitate what you just did. I can't. That, that's it. That's, oh, um, Goblin brings up chicken. Can you give us a good chicken noise? No, <laughs> I've never seen a chicken. Rebel, what? <laughs> you lived in Calgary. You have worked for the Stampede. Yeah. <laughs> How about an owl? Can Hi-ho, you... Hi-ho, chicken on the raft. <laughs> Can you give us an owl? An owl? Yeah. Owl's um, an easy one. Whoo. Crushed it. Well done. You're welcome. You're Ladies welcome. and gentlemen, that was Claris Makes Up the News. Wow, I should put vocal gymnastics on my resume. That was the single greatest thing that we've ever done on Twitch. The arms. Oh. Y'all, the arms. <laughs> I needed, you know, help me oh, get Oh, man. Character. How quickly can I add an alert to my channel? Um, Stop. Don't you dare. <laughs> just you making chicken noises. Don't you dare. All right, y'all. <laughs> oh, wow. We have one <sighs> last story today. Um, and that is that uh, this past weekend was Comic-Con at home. Another year of socially distant Comic-Con. Um, and uh, it was fine. 
Oh, I didn't even notice. No one else did either. Uh, there's a little bit of news to talk about, but uh, I do. <sighs> I will have to say, with almost all of the major studios not participating, this year's Comic-Con at home definitely uh, felt a little bit like a uh, disappointment. Um, and uh, that uh, that's a shame. I, I think that, you know, I think Comic-Con never really figured out how to do the at-home thing in yeah. the same way that... Um, uh, in the same way that I think, like, Fandom did last year. I thought yeah. Fandom... The DC Fandom last year was what Comic-Con should have been. Yeah, it was fun. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it, you know, Comic-Con, they're, they're doing their best, but, uh, this year was... Par partially that Comic-Con just doesn't really have a great at-home experience, but also partially just that a lot of studios just kind of didn't, um, participate. Yeah. Which is... Well, yeah, I'm sure they're kind of like, what's the point? What it is, yeah. Um, are you excited for Comic-Con to be back? Yeah, um, that reminds me. Actually, we gotta we gotta buy our fan expo tickets. Oh yeah, um, for October this week. This week, um, yeah, I cannot wait to go back to cons. <laughs> I cannot wait to like meet cool people and see awesome art and like yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. I, um, I'm so stoked. Let's get into some announcements here. Uh, Doctor Who uh, said the 13th season is coming. Um, they showed a trailer, and uh, so the 13th season of Doctor Who will return this year. Uh, and they announced the new companion in the trailer, um, which is very exciting. Also, um, the guy who plays Grey Worm on oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Game of Thrones is going to be one of the villains, I believe, this year, which is very exciting. That's fun. Um, and uh, they, they announced that for the first time in um, uh, in this rerun uh, or in this new era of Doctor Who, uh, the entire season will be one story. That's more serialized and less episodic oh. than past seasons. Interesting. Which uh, is an interesting change. I think um, there was... Uh... Doctor Who is very Monster of the Week with, mm -hmm. like, sometimes, not even always, but most of the time, like, a general overarching mm -hmm. story as well. Um, I think that there was... Uh, I think season 12 of Doctor Who got some backlash for... I didn't even finish it, and I love Doctor Who. Um, you know, I, I think even people who are still watching it um, acknowledge that the quality of the episodes varies wildly from episode to episode. Yeah. Um, and so uh, this, like, one story through the entire season might be a way to try and um, correct that, respond to that. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> uh, and uh, what else? Oh, uh, the Zack Snyder prequel, Army of Thieves, the Army of the Dead prequel, has been given uh, a trailer, a poster announcement, and an announcement that, that that movie is coming out this year. We're getting two movies in this franchise in one year, mm -hmm. which is kind of crazy. Um, but, uh, for those of you who were fans of the safe cracker in Army of the Dead, find out about another safe he cracked. Yeah, I guess, yeah. This is a weird prequel, because we know Cause what happens not... to, like, I don't know. It's just yeah. a weird one. Yeah. Um, we got the news that the Wheel of Time series, the, uh, Amazon show that people are saying is coming to fill that Game of Thrones size hole in your heart, um, that Wait, is- Wait, Really? Yeah, I think Wheel of Time is considered by some to be, like, a comparable kind of giant epic fantasy book series. Okay. Why? Why Why do you, uh, why are you questioning that? They just feel, like, very, they feel very different to me. In what way? Well, uh, keeping in mind, I've only read the first Wheel of Time book and I was, like, nine. Um, but that, like, Wheel of Time, at <clears> least <throat> from my memory, and... I could be very, very wrong, mm -hmm. but feels a lot lighter and less politically driven. Like, like it's, it's like less dramatic, I guess, but maybe. I guess it is. I, I think it's more that it is the kind of like big high fantasy that's taken very seriously. I guess. And based on this poster, it looks like it's very dramatic. Okay. <laughs> um, that right. is going, but, uh, for those of you who are surprised. fans. Of, I've never read the book, so I, you know, I don't Okay. Know. Yeah. It's been a, it's been a while. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, it was probably a bit above my, like... Comprehension age. level? Yeah, like, Wheel of Time, is, there's, a, there's a lot in there. Yeah. Uh, that's coming in November. So for those of you with an Amazon Prime membership, uh, get ready for that series. Cool. Well, we'll uh, be watching it. A little bit earlier than that in the year, we're going to be getting Chucky on TV. Uh, a series based around the murderous little doll that we all know and love. It's coming yeah. October 12th to Sci-Fi which I'm very excited about. I like Chucky quite a bit. Um, I don't love the trailer. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, the the trailer sets up that the kid that buys Chucky in this one has, like, a weird, like, relationship with Chucky oh. that I didn't love. Um, 
Okay. I like when Chucky's kind of like a demonic force. I don't necessarily love the kid like clutching at Chucky. I don't know. We'll see. I I, I think that it might have just been the way the trailer was cut from my taste. Um, I'm definitely going to check the series out. I, I've always loved the um, Child's Play series, and uh, I'm uh, I'm just I'm really excited for this. My one interaction with Chucky was at um, uh, Universal Studios, mm-hmm. and they there was like a haunted mansion, ooh, and they had this like wall of stuffed animals, and they had like a like Chucky doll in the middle, and I was like, oh wow, I was like that's a like real looking doll, and he freaking moved, and then. <laughs> Chase me out of the haunted mansion. So we don't love Chucky. We don't love Chucky. All right. I love Chucky. Um, You're wrong. The Walking Dead is coming back for part one of its final season. Uh, and that is going to debut on August 23rd over on Binge, which I've never heard of. I've never heard of. Yeah. But um, it's kind of crazy. But yeah, you'll be able to watch uh, one month from now. Uh, the Walking Dead's final season will debut. This is weird, because usually it debuts in October, the same weekend as New York Comic Con. It, like, The Walking Dead has always premiered the Sunday night of New York Comic Con. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've had their big Saturday night panel at New York Comic Con, and then the episode premieres the next day. Yeah, hype it um, up. But um, apparently it's on binge now, which I'm going to have to check out another streaming service. No, we don't need to watch The Walking Dead. Um, that show's dead. Fair. Uh, we also got trailers for the final season of Lucifer, the next season of Legends of Tomorrow, Star Trek, uh, Lower Decks, as well as the Paramount Plus Children's series, um, uh, Star Trek Prodigy, which is a Star Trek show aimed at younger audiences. Mm-hmm. Um, there's going to be another season of I Know What You Did Last Summer. There's so much small television streaming news, mm-hmm. is what it feels like. This Comic-Con is a lot about streaming television, including the upcoming Showtime revival of Dexter. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dexter New Blood will start airing on November 7th. Uh, and for those of you who ever watched Dexter, I'm sure this is very exciting. Hopefully the show can redeem the season finale, the series finale, which uh, everyone tells me is the worst series finale of all time. Uh, yeah. Didn't watch it, but I know a lot of people really love the show for the most part. Like, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, so, yeah. I've been told repeatedly to watch up until John Lithgow's season. And then at the end of that season, except that the show is over and never watch past that point. Because apparently, apparently, well, no, apparently his, like, John Lithgow is the villain of that season. And apparently that is, like, the peak of the show. Mm -hmm. That, like, John Lithgow, we're live, babe. We're on video right now. I'm sorry, it's attached. What? We're in, we're doing, what are you doing? Well, I thought one of my hairs was, like, but it's not mine, it's yours. We're we're live. I'm the, in going. the middle of a sentence, you're just going... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like a gorilla you. grooming its mate, like... Yeah, somebody's gotta do it. Jesus Christ. Um... J- Richard Sim 7 is saying the problem is season 4 was so good that it made the rest feel mediocre, but it's still good. Interesting. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's what I've fair. heard. I've heard, like, the, the, the arc of the show is so strong in the John Lithgow season that it just feels like a perfect climax. <laughs> and that everything else after that feels just kind of tacked on. But um, hopefully they're able to redeem that series finale, because I know a lot of people are upset about Lumberjack Dexter. Um, Lumberjack Dexter. Seriously. Oh, okay. That's that's how it ends. He's a lumberjack. Spoilers. Sorry. <laughs> All right. I mean, it's been out a while. So. And also, like, I don't know how you've avoided... If you've avoided hearing... The I mean, I didn't outrage know. that Dexter became a lumberjack. I I'm amazed because that's I just heard people moaning I'm about it for years. I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. <laughs> Someone edited the final shot of the um, <laughs> show to be that song, so they like edited like a slow version of that song over the top of the final wow. scene. Wow! To express their outrage at the series. That's finale. incredible. But yeah, that's all the that's all the news from Comic Con. All right. And that's all the news from us. Oh. Yeah. That's the final thing to talk about today. We're at an hour. The show kind of worked out. Yeah. Timing wise. Well done. Um, uh, The Walking Dead is a show that's a lot like a zombie, brainlessly roaming around until someone finally kills it. Yep. I think The Walking Dead suffers from the same thing that every show that goes 10 seasons suffers, which is that there are peaks and valleys and that it is impossible to maintain a high for that long. I, I think that there are so many highs in The Walking Dead, and it is an unbelievably successful series, and there is a reason for that. There is really incredible television and storytelling in The Walking Dead. Um, and I think that um, there's also some there's also some not great moments in The Walking Dead, and that's just mm-hmm. the reality of making 
a show for 10 years. There's going to be th- storylines yeah. that work and some that don't. Everything goes on for too long nowadays. Like, pitch yeah, a thing, true. do the thing. Don't try and keep, like, stretching and stretching it out because it's just going to break. Like, I, I Richard Sim 7, I would say that Always Sunny has parts that aren't as good, though. I love Always Sunny. But, like, <laughs> it's not as serialized, so individual seasons don't have to, like, hold an arc the same way. Mm-hmm. So, it's Always Sunny, as long as there's, as long as, like most of the episodes are really funny each season they get away with it Mm -hmm. um and i think that's kind of what almost what sunny does i think that there are very unfunny episodes of always sunny um or or at least like where the comedy didn't work for me and episodes where the comedy really did and so i think that that is just the nature of a comedy i think it is easier to do a comedy like it's always sunny for 14 years than a serialized drama where you have to the emotional toll of past seasons has to continue to be there because these characters have to have this continued trauma Whereas It's Always Sunny can, like, do something with a season and then kind of forget about it the next season and, like, do something else. Um, and I think they've been really successful at that. I think, um, you know, the Mac graining weight storyline is a great example of that. Uh, they use that to really good effect and then they moved on from it. Um, so I just think that, I think that comedies have it easier. I think something like The Simpsons. Simpsons is on, what, like, the 95th season or something crazy. Um, and so I think you can get away with it in that format more than in a drama where it's a little bit tougher um yeah but yeah Taylor Springs and Frasier was really different at the end that's true too well it's because once people leave it's tough right it's because people can only like have so much growth and like Mm -hmm. you know unless you're telling a story over the span of someone's entire lifetime like they can only have so much things happen to them and deal with so much and grow so much in like a certain amount of time otherwise you have to keep regressing them back and like um rehashing stuff you've already done and yeah a lot Mm -hmm. of time it just doesn't work yeah i think i think it's best when you know where you're going i thought the good place was so good for that like the good place is a perfect four seasons yeah good place is a perfect show please watch it shows that have like an ending plotted out at the beginning are so good yeah actually you know the good place is interesting because i think that there was a point in the middle of it where like they almost like i was like it wasn't perfect. I say it's perfect because I think the ending was perfect and that's almost impossible for a show. But there was a point in the middle where I was like, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Where I wasn't like a thousand percent on board. I and think, And it's just, it's interesting because the ending is the last thing you see that you're like, wow, this is incredible because it that's what it leaves you with. But I also think The Good Place is the kind of show where when you see it it's in its entirety where it goes makes it those makes portions of the journey more sense yeah yeah you need to see where it goes in order to understand why that was important then yeah that's right. and when you're in the middle of it it can be harder to understand where it's going especially mm-hmm. with a show like the good place where you it, it goes in directions you don't expect mm-hmm. i think that but i think that that is the that is what's so great about a show that has an ending plotted out mm-hmm. is that you can make those middle moments that maybe feel a little bit weird the first time you see them because you don't understand the journey yep you make them feel more relevant. Yeah, for sure. Um, when you go back and watch it again, because you're like, oh, this is really important two seasons from now, and I didn't know that the first time I saw it. Yeah, I have a feeling um, that uh, The Witcher is going to be like that. Because um, a lot of you yeah. know, I liked Ooh. the first season of The Witcher, uh, but I had some big problems with it. Yeah. And I think that season two um, is going to be a lot better and really make season one feel better, which uh, we should rewatch because um, it's been a while. We'll rewatch we when we're close to season two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, y'all, that's gonna be our show for today. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us for the Nightly Morning Show. As always, uh, this is this is such a joy. We wanted to let you know that we will not have a Nightly Morning Show next week. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are not going to be in Toronto, and so uh, we won't have our computer and our everything, so we won't be able to do it. Yeah. Uh, so we are gonna take a quick two-week hiatus, but we will be back on August, I think it's the 9th? Yep. Yeah, we'll be back on August 9th with another Nightly Morning Show. We'll have two weeks worth of news. We'll have so much box office to talk about. It's going to be an absolute blast. Yeah. We'll have twice as many graphics. It'll be great. Uh, but until then, you can follow us over on other platforms. Uh, if you're watching live, uh, please follow my Twitch where you are. But also go follow this one over at twitch.tv slash Claris Follow us over on YouTube. We are currently pushing to get that Claris Jakaris YouTube to 100 subscribers so that we can get the custom uh, thumbnail or the custom URL for the channel. Yeah. Uh, we want youtube.com slash Clarastra Caris. So please go subscribe to that channel as well. Um, and uh, what else? Um, 
I, well, I mean, we're pretty much everywhere. You can follow us on TikTok. Uh, mm-hmm. We have our merch store. Final plug for that. Redbubble.com um, slash nerdy nightly. Get your boner champ merch. Be a boner champ. Be, yeah, be, be, be a boner champ. a boner champ. Um, I'm going to be on Twitch streaming later at 4 o'clock Eastern, uh, more Mass Effect. Um, hopefully yeah. today I won't want to rage quit. Commander Shep. Um, you probably will. Mass Effect 1 is hard. It's a hard game. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. See, you just did it. That's, that's not, no. You just made the noise. You just went, uh. <gasps> Oh, you do no. it all the time. I'm telling oh, you. No. You're like, I never make that noise. You just made the noise. Oh, no. This is the meanest thing you could have ever done to I me. I know. I'm so sorry. Oh, God. Okay, Richard Sim 7, I am a very different vocal structure. I, I was doing my best. You have nothing to be self-conscious about. It's very cute. Sure. Richard Sim 7 agrees with me. Thanks. Chat agree with me. It's very cute when she does it. I don't want you to stop doing it. I love it. I love it so much. I just make weird noises. Please, 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 please know that you, I love the weird noises that you make. Thank you. I love all the noises that you make. Um, (laughs) I love you. I love you too. Um, Yeah, y'all, that's the show. That's the show. Uh, We're going to, uh, we're going to go play Mass Effect later today. So come watch that. It's fun. Watch Claris Rage. Yep. Anything else? I very nearly cried last week. Uh, no, thanks for stream. Um, we will see you guys back here for the morning show in two weeks' time. Yes. And I'll be uh, live tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., with some Poker Mornings. We're going to start Heart Gold for the fourth time because I wiped to Whitney. So sorry. Yeah, my name's Nerdy. And I'm Clarice. <laughs> Do something nerdy tonight. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye.